Hey, welcome back to another video. You may see that my videos are looking a little different and I am definitely enjoying it. So please like if you like my new layout here. We're going to have a lot of fun with this and um, I'm ready. So today we're just going to get right into it. This is my list of mental health jobs that do not require a degree or student loans. You know, I'm all about helping you guys save money, okay? And helping you guys be your best self. Now, without further ado, we're jumping right into it. Most of these mental health jobs that I'm going to be talking about today, while you can have a master's degree and attain it, you don't necessarily need to have one, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Mental health jobs that do not require a degree or student loans. Now, for most of these mental health jobs that I'm going to be talking about on today, some of the requirements do come from my state. I live in Georgia. It is mandatory that you search what require, which requirements apply to your state. Every state is going to be different. For some of these jobs that I'm going to be talking about today, I had to look up what's required in my state. There isn't a national database that I can look at that will tell me their requirements. A lot of these are state by state. So look up what's required for your state. Most often you will find that they have the same or similar requirements. First up, substance abuse counselor. Now for this, you are going to need paid or voluntary work experience where you have direct contact and responsibility for a caseload of individuals enrolled in treatment for a substance use disorder or co-occurring mental and substance use disorders. All right. Now, you will also need 6,000 work experience hours. That's not a lot of time, guys. Think of it this way. If you work full time, if you work 40 hours a week, that's 160 hours per month, 1,920 hours per year. And at about three years, that gives you 5,760 hours. So roughly three and a half years to become certified and work on expanding your career. This is still a great opportunity if you're looking to expand your career, get some certifications under your belt, you can do so in less than five years, even less than four. Think of some of these requirements as school, the amount of time that it may have taken you to go to college. So I don't want you to think that these things are totally out of reach because they're not. For most of you, if you clicked on this video, you're probably already in the mental health field. So you may have already been doing these things and didn't know you could get a certification in an attempt to expand your career. In addition to getting the certification, now this is becoming a substance abuse counselor, so you need certification. You will also have to have a job supervisor who is employed at the site that you're working at, and they have to be certified either as a independent therapist or they can have a substance abuse certification, okay? Again, because you are not a degreed individual and you are looking to have a position as a substance abuse counselor, this requires certification. I hope it's making sense for you, okay? You may need around 300 hours of supervision from that supervisor, more or less, depending on your state. Again, check your state requirements. For example, if you meet with your supervisor two hours a week, I know for me that was the case in some of my jobs. I met with my supervisor or when I was a supervisor, they met with me for about two hours. Let's say you meet with your supervisor for two hours a week, eight hours a month, 96 hours a year. Got it? That's three years. That's going to take you about three years worth of full-time work where you could easily meet this requirement. Not to mention case consultations or other manners in which you may be able to count as supervision. Okay? In addition, for the substance abuse certification, you will need specific education hours. So that CEUs, trainings, workshops, again, more or less 300 hours. Check your state, okay? I'm telling you what is required for my state of Georgia. As I said in the beginning, I'm using Georgia as a reference point. But if you live in Oregon, if you live in New York, it may be 
quite different. They may be some of the same, okay? For the specific education, think of your in-services. Think of the required trainings that you are, that you have to have as an employee of your organization. And also, you can do a lot of them online for a reasonable price. I often use ce4less.com and you can get it free for 30 days and it will $75 for the entire year after that. And you can take as many hours as you need. Peruse their internet for free CEUs. Okay, again, this is an investment. This is an investment into your future and you can easily do the 300 hours. No problem. Next, you have to pass the alcohol and drug exam. Now, for most states, the exam may be about $150 to $200. One thing to note, a great tip here, is that if you work at an organization that wants you to be certified within six months, 90 days, whatever the requirement is, they will often pay for it. They will often pay for you to take your exam, okay? So that I've seen that happen time and time again. Side note, I know we talk, we're talking about full certification here, but I do want to let you know that there is a temporary alcohol and drug certification, often called CADC-T, which states that you are a credible professional working in the substance abuse field. However, you haven't yet obtained all of your hours needed for full certification and independent practice. But this is a great incentive to help keep you motivated and keep you encouraged towards working toward that full certification. OK, so for the sake of this video, I'm only discussing full certification, but I wanted to let you know if that a bit. OK. And according to Glassdoor.com, the average salary is $38,000. Again, this is with a high school diploma. Next one is gambling counselor. Okay, so the gambling counselor, if you do not have a degree, if you currently have a substance abuse certification in the state of Georgia, you can then be allowed to apply for the gambling certification. This is, again, without a degree. In other states, you might be able to apply for the gambling counselor application without that. You need 100 hours of problem gambling specific experience, a total of 90 hours of education divided among their performance domains. So basic knowledge, path pathological gambling, gambling counselor practice. So again, these CEUs, okay? And they go on. Code of ethics, we all know that. You have to sign something saying you abide by the code of ethics. And then the exam. So there's a written exam. Okay. And then of course you have to keep up with your CEUs. This is no different from any other certification or license. So nothing uncommon there. And according to glassdoor.com, the average salary is 35,000 for a gambling counselor. Next up is a certified peer specialist. A certified peer specialist is a person who has received special training to be able to use their lived experience of recovery from a mental health concern to support and assist others. In some states, there are multiple certified peer specialist credentials. For example, there are also peer recovery specialists in the area of substance abuse, which may vary in training and hours of supervision or experience. However, it is the same concept in which an individual with lived experience is supporting another individual with similar experiences. Therefore, I chose not to go into detail on this position. However, note it is a type of peer specialist. Also, Feel free to research recovery specialists in your area or addiction certified peer specialists or go to NADAC, the Association of Addiction Professionals. As far as the requirements go, you must be willing to identify as a person with a lived experience, either mental health or substance abuse. OK, and you must be willing to use your experience to support others have to have a GED or high school diploma, must be well-grounded in recovery and at least one year working towards wellness and recovery. The application process can include online submission and phone interviews for selected applicants to participate in the training. The trainings are about two weeks long and there is an $85 registration fee for the training materials. Following the successful completion of the training, each participant must pass the Certified Peer Specialist exam.
You must maintain the appropriate hours of continuing education units per calendar year. Again, no different than other certifications and license. No different. And then, of course, there are many opportunities to obtain CEUs through workshops, webinars, and conferences. And according to Glassdoor.com, the average salary range for a peer specialist, a certified peer specialist, is $47,000 a year. Yes. Next up is a mobile crisis field consultant. As I said before, you can do this job with a master's degree. I've, in fact, known colleagues of mine to participate as a mobile crisis counselor. However, with some organizations, you can have a high school diploma with one to two years of human service experience. Now, if you're not familiar with a mobile crisis counselor or field consultant, what they do is, so a lot of the people, when there is an emergency, they call 911. Now, if 911 deems this to be a mental health crisis or emergency or urgency, they can dispatch licensed or trained professionals to help out, to de-escalate the situation, to reduce hospitalization, to reduce incarceration, and really assist in getting that person the care that they needed, okay? So that's what a mobile crisis, in a nutshell, small nutshell, consists of. Now, you may have trainings. You may have trainings, including crisis intervention skills, such as de-escalation or Suicide prevention, maybe like assist or QPR. However, this isn't a standing requirement across the board. This is just a suggestion as far as what may be required of you as a mobile crisis field consultant or counselor. I couldn't find a median pay range on Glassdoor because of so many variances within this position alone. But Google says the pay can range anywhere from $17 an hour to $31 an hour. I also did my research looking at different mobile crisis counselors and that seemed about right. Lastly, <laughs> I want to talk about a mental health technician job. And I'm going to use that word just for the sake of trying to be as all-encompassing as I can. Positions can vary in title, type of work, and location of work, but the population is usually a special population, one of high risk, maybe substance abuse, suicide prevention, homelessness, domestic violence, sexual assault, youth, at-risk youth, teenage mothers, and so on. So any of those jobs can exist in those population areas, okay? They can exist, whether it be a homeless shelter, a domestic violence shelter, a residential substance treatment facility, a crisis line, places like that. Now, some of these positions, which are oftentimes entry level, require a high school diploma, with or without direct mental health experience. The organizations may provide, and often do, provide training to help guide the work being asked of them. Now, personally, I believe this position has the most leverage because if you can find an organization that believes in you, has the willingness and support to mold you into an exceptional helping professional with training, of course, and proper supervision, an individual can really take off and be an incredible asset to that organization. And a lot of times people who have experienced such molding and care and support from an organization, they remember that and they really show up and do their best to help that organization be, be very successful and have great care. And these positions can usually range from $10 an hour on. And those are my list of mental health jobs that do not require a degree or student loans. In reference to high paying work, with the exception of the mental health technician jobs, all of the jobs mentioned were around average for a person with a high school diploma. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median Weekly earnings of a person without a high school diploma was $606 compared to $749 with high school graduates. What that shows is a person with a high school diploma averaging $749 a week averaged $2,996 a month, which totaled $35,952 a year.
Compared to a person without a high school diploma, they averaged $606 a week, which totaled $2,424 a month, which then totaled $29,088 a year, which leaves a $6,864 difference. A lot of these jobs were on average for high paying compared to the data for high school versus nine high school graduates. Okay, thanks so much. I'm out.